prove that this set w is a subspace of r squared. So proof. Before we start the proof, let me really, really quickly remind you what it means for w to be a subspace of r squared. So in general, a subset w of a vector space v, so v here is our vector space, is a subspace of v if the following three conditions hold. So the first condition is that w must be a non-empty subset. So it cannot be the empty set. Two. The second condition is that w should be closed under vector addition. In other words, given any two vectors, x and y, and w, their sum must also reside inside w. So x plus y also needs to be an element of w. And three, given any alpha in our field f, usually the field is taken to be the real numbers. In this example, uh, we'll use the real numbers. Usually you use the complex of the real numbers. So any alpha, so any real number, and any vector x in our subset, if you have these two things, then the product alpha times the vector x should also reside inside the subset w. So this is called closure, closure under scalar multiplication. So it's non-empty, it's closed under vector addition, and it's closed under scalar multiplication. All right, so let's go ahead and do this proof. And as we do it, I'll number the steps. So step one, we have to show it's not empty. So we have to explain why there is a vector uh, in W. Well, the easiest choice is zero, because note, zero is equal to minus zero. So that's this condition here with A equal to zero and B equal to zero. So this is precisely what it means for the vector zero, zero to be inside W. So this shows that W is not the empty set. So it's a non-empty subset. So condition one is satisfied and we're done with that part of the proof. Two, here we have to show it's closed under vector addition. So to show condition two, we have to start by supposing we have two vectors, x, y, and w. So suppose x, y, r, and w. And then all we do is write down what that means. So this means x, well, how do I know what to write down here? Well, you just look up here. All of the vectors in W have this form, AB. So X can be written as AB. And likewise, Y, it also has that form. So we'll use different letters, CD. With, and what does it mean for X to be in W? Well, it means that A is equal to negative B. And what does it mean for Y to be in W? Well, it means that C is equal to negative D. And so now we just simply have to show that the sum, x plus y, is also in w. So then, x plus y, well, x is simply ab, and y is cd. And how do you add vectors? Well, we just use regular component-wise addition. So this is a plus c, and here we have b plus d. And now in the case of x, we had to show that x was equal to negative b. Here we have to show that a plus c is equal to negative the quantity b plus d. So with, and it should work out, a plus c. Well, we'll use this condition here. a is equal to negative b. So this is negative b. And now we'll use this condition here. c is equal to negative d. So this is negative d. Then you can factor out negative 1 and write this as b plus d. So a plus c is equal to the opposite of b plus d. That's precisely what it means for this guy to be inside w. So x plus y is in w. So this shows that w is closed under vector addition. The last thing we have to do is explain why it's closed under scalar multiplication. So 3. We'll start by taking some alpha. So suppose... Alpha is a real number, so in this problem, our field is R, and X is a vector in W. So as before, we usually write down what this means. So this means, means that we can write X equal to A, B, with A equal to negative B. Now we have to explain why the vector alpha X is also in W. So then, alpha X well, this is simply alpha times AB. And we can here, we can perform the scalar multiplication. So this is alpha A, alpha B. 
And now we just have to show that alpha A is equal to the opposite of alpha B. So with, let's write it down and see if it works, alpha A, we can replace A with negative B. So that worked out nicely. So alpha negative B. And then we can write it this way as negative alpha B. Skipping some steps there. So negative alpha B. So alpha A is equal to the opposite of alpha B. Right? These are numbers, so we can do that. So this is precisely what it means for the vector alpha x to be in w. So alpha x is in w. So since w is non-empty, closed under vector addition, and closed under scalar multiplication, let's, let's finish the right way under scalar <laughs> multiplication, uh, W is a subspace of V. W is a subspace ah, of V. So I kind of rushed that, but uh, I think I already have another video on this. I just wanted to make one more because uh, you need to practice uh, these to get good at them. I hope that made sense.